Hey fellow world dwellers, it's Angry Turtle and in today's video, it is, yes, it is for PC users, so my apologies to all console users. According to my knowledge, those settings are unfortunately not available for you. But if you want to see what's possible on PC, feel free to stay. Now, what I want to focus in this video is a lot of custom ini settings that we can use for quality of life improvements in Fallout, as well as several settings that can improve how good Fallout 76 look like. If you are particularly looking for FPS improvement, let me know. I could do another video in this topic if you just need to push FPS higher. At this moment, I don't think anyone is struggling. Maybe? Is there anyone with PC older than like five years that is still struggling to get a good FPS? Like I, in this moment, have 110 FPS and that's on really high details. So, I try to make the introduction into any files as easy for you as possible. I have all the settings that are useful, compiled, and I will talk about them. Just in case you are new and you don't know how to make your custom mini, it is super simple. All you need to do is go to your documents, then find my games folder, after that followed 76 folder and depending if you are using the game through Steam or through Xbox Game Store, it there will be any files called project76 or, or followed76.ini. So when you don't have your custom ini yet, all you do is take that regular followed76 ini or project ini, copy it paste so you have that it's the copy then open it select all it's control a remove save so it will be blank at first so we have it empty it does nothing then rename it and just remove the part about the copy and that go to followed 76 and basically type custom and enter that's it i'm not creating it because that will be duplicate i already have one after you create it you name it followed 76 custom.ini or project 76 custom.ini depend what was the beginning of the name you don't change it you just remove the copy and replace as custom after you will do it from the description on this video just copy everything and paste into this file, then save. Uh, for your own convenience, I will do it in the way that initially all those settings will be disabled. So it will be doing nothing, and then you manually switch on what you want to have on. Now, what can you choose from? Let's discuss those changes one by one. Hopefully you can see it. I try to do it a little bit bigger. So those are the settings I'm running. I will make it for you that there will be everywhere the minus sign in front on every setting, which means it's disabled. When there is minus sign, it does nothing. When you remove it, it will do what is in description I put together. I apologize already for any possible typos. Um, like I'm not good with letters. I'm way better with numbers and any file do not correct you when you type something wrong. So that out of the way, what it does. Intro sequence, that's when you are starting the game. No standby video, straight into the skip button. So no delay. You will still need to wait if your game can crash if you press anything too early. So a little bit you may wait, but there is no forced wait. After that, uh, let's go skip splash. That one removes this r loud sound when you press the skip button. This like boom sound when you press the skip button. That disables that. So that's faster launching of the game. Then disabling all gore. This I will show you in game. This basically makes sure enemies always stay in one piece. 
even if you have bloody mess equipped. Okay, we have a volunteer in here. And now you can see there is nothing. It stays in one piece. There is no splash of any form and it will not fall apart. Even though I do have bloody mess equipped. It is handy for several reasons. It's easier to find enemies. It's easier on the game for FPS purposes too, but that's not my focus. I want the game to look pretty. I'm not really focusing in this video on improving FPS. And another aspect, if you want to upload it anywhere, it will be more PG friendly, let's say. If there is no all of these gore effects, they all remove. Then there is more loading uh, improvements, like when you use elevators, I just put faster elevators. It just all the loading screens interface the same thing loading screens fast travel loading screens and so on uh, let me demonstrate what it does and i'm not sure about this one if it's even necessary but it seems that it must be here for some cases to get this faster loading screens if you know better what this one does is this one i just copied from someone uh, let me know it says show compass but i have no idea what it's supposed to do in relation to faster loading screens so how those loading screens work? If I fast travel somewhere, like Wayward for example, normally after this loading screen will end, there is like a fade from black that slowly dissipates. And this setting makes it dissipate in one second and let you move instantly after. The side effect, especially if your hard drive is a little bit slower, you will sometimes see objects appearing in front of you after you fast travel as they spawn a little bit too slow. But it makes all loading screens faster. Another loading screen into the interior and the same. It lets you move faster. It's only one second wait instead of, I think default is like three or five. I'm not even sure. So it just lets you move faster. Next one, mouse acceleration. This one disables mouse acceleration. So regardless how fast you move your mouse, so so in this case, regardless how fast I move my mouse, the amount I rotate with the crosshair, it's only dependent on how much I move the mouse. If you have mouse acceleration, the fast movement with will increase amount of space your crosshair will cover. So you can do 360 by very very short movement if it's fast movement in fps games obviously we don't want that you want to be able to quickly aim at whatever you want without overshooting and there will be a lot of overshooting if mouse acceleration is on after that some additional things like fog you can disable it it's not all the fog some of the fog will be disabled so better visibility and wetness occlusion, if you don't like how the wet characters and everything wet looks in Fallout 76, which is, to be honest, kind of like... It, wet characters for me looks like they made out of wax. So I don't necessarily like it. If you switch it, if you use this setting, they will never be wet. It's, all characters will be always dry, even if it's raining. After that, a screen splatter. That in case, like it doesn't really matter if you already have disabled all gore, but if you don't, then there will be no splashing on camera lens of your character when you are fighting. Which is for some people more immersive, for me it's less. If I imagine I look through my own eyes from first person, you don't really have splatter on your eyes lens. So I uh, prefer it off. Then sometimes you may choose to play without the grass, just to see how it looks like, or if you struggle to find something. So you can see I have it uh, disabled, so I have grass on. If I would switch this minus off, like if I would remove this minus, I will have no grass. That's how I uh, made this setting. So removing the minus sign, basically switch on whatever I put in those descriptions. Then, auto saves every minute. I think it works, it's hard to verify. The game already makes autosave every time you fast travel or do any activities, so it's a lot of autosave. But just in case, 
you want to make sure the auto saves to the server are being done this one makes it to one minute interval even if you don't do anything of significance that normally would save like fast travel then another one as i put in description this one will entirely nuke all depth of field effects so water will be perfectly transparent but world will look more flat i usually don't use it unless i want to explore underwater about the water topic there is another option as well i'm not using this a there but you can if you want to quickly explore big areas big bodies of water to see what's underneath you can switch that on and water visually will disappear everywhere on the map there will be like no water it's still there but it will be absolutely invisible so we can fly above a lake and you will see everything that's in the bottom it will look like the lake is dry there will be still water like if you jump in there you will be still underwater you will still be able to gather water and everything but it will not be visible at all that just for exploration underwater exploration sometimes are fun it's temporary setting of course it breaks immersion but if you need to check out something real quickly on the bottom of lake that works then a camera that that's a heavy requested one that i'm using that allows you to release a selfie camera uh, let me give you some examples so if i'm inside interiors i make my camera super small so i can move this camera and squeeze through the spaces that you normally cannot like normally you cannot fly over this desk to move the camera so close to those items you can do that but if your camera is super small you can so you can fly through the spaces that normally you are not allowed to more freedom to your camera as well the distance how far can you fly is completely unlocked with the first setting so now i'm outside i can show you that you need to be outside to show that let's put the camera speed to the maximum uh, switch the depth of field off uh, look what can i do normally you cannot do that in photo mode if you unlock it i can fly anywhere with my camera i can fly across the map there is no limit basically the limit is entire map at this moment of course unfortunately the textures will not render based on camera they do render based on your character so if you fly too far like you can already see here there is no grass the billboard is getting off and some things are disappearing when you are too far too so yeah it gives you the freedom you don't necessarily want to fly as far away but it gives you this freedom you can take picture from as far away as you please for whatever purpose you may need that and those will be all the settings from the custom in you can see what i'm using whatever does not have the minus sign in front i'm using whatever does have it i'm not using but it's here for me if i would like to use it one day for whatever reason it's available now let's go to the second topic which is making game more pretty and for that we'll be using the regular game settings as well as nvidia control panel and prefs ini so that's another ini file settings you need to do first so whatever you want to do regards to display setting you do it first borderless or full screen windows this one is up to you basically what i recommend if the game is crashing in whatever mode you are using it switch it to other mode quite often it's fixing the problem resolution fit all of that uh, i have everything ultra high as much as possible with exception of shadow distance that i keep at medium those are heavy and let's be honest followed 76 shadows uh, are not up to modern standards in gaming so i did what i could to improve them i will show you as well i have rendering distance to the maximum yeah, my my pc is two years old but can absolutely do all of that usually with above 100 fps i have a cap set at 120 you can see on the screen even when recording multiple windows open uh, quite often i i am hitting 120 that's the cap that i have set so those settings you do those first whatever you want because when you change them and exit the game that's when the game will modify your pref ini file so after you choose whatever you want 
you will need to go quit to desktop. I don't need because I already did that. So you quit the desktop and then you go to modify when the game, of course, is closed. Always modify the files when the game is closed, not when you are playing. And find your prefs any. One more time. It will be for you. This followed 76 prefs any, or if you are on Xbox, it will be called Project 76 and not Project 76 prefs any. Either one, whatever you have. I have both games, that's why you can see both. I have Xbox version and Steam version. I intentionally kept both on the screen so you can see some of the default settings that I do have on Xbox version and what I did change. On Xbox version, I was running for comparison, uh, high distance shadows, there is no visible distance, like uh, visible difference. So I stick to medium, medium. Now the biggest problem with shadows is the blending when they change quality. So by default, it's set at 48. It's really low. It makes it like a visible circle around you with different quality shadows than outside of the circle. It looks terrible. I don't know if you noticed that, but I did, absolutely did notice. Changing this value from 48 to 192, and yes, you should be do multiply it, not random numbers. I was testing random numbers. It wasn't working very well. So just four times 48, we are at 192, and that's perfect value. That's when transition of shadows are no longer visible. There's no this artificial circle. They will still transition, but it will blend in nicely. Is it a day? Can I show it already? Still night, so it will not be perfect showcase, but you can see at those shadows. Uh, coming closer, they have more details, but they still quite soft. Uh, I did one more change to make them almost always quite soft. If I move away, you can see that resolution drops and they a lower resolution, even softer. Without changes to this setting, it's happening abruptly. So you can see exactly when the line is moving, changing quality of the shadows, and I hate that. So I did this additional change. What I change is I mo I max focus shadows, not as much for improvement to performance, but as well to reduce amount of updates and quality changes to the shadows near me. Those shadows are already not perfect. I just want them softer and less noticeable that they keep evolving and changing around me as it's kind of immersion breaking. So I, I, I made those changes. Feel free to do them or not to do them. Very important, keep the filters high. That makes the shadows soft. Even if you choose to reduce the shadow quality or whatever, always manually change those filters to free. That makes shadows nice, smooth. Then we are scrolling a little bit down. We are looking for the Pip-Boy resolution. So original Pip-Boy resolution, it's that line. 700 by 876. What I did... I double those numbers. And no, you cannot again use random numbers as you will change the proportions of the Pip Boy and it will be stretched. Just double it. Doubling those numbers quadruple the resolution of the Pip Boy. How does it look like? If I open the Pip Boy, look how high resolution. I found this setting recently. Usually I was not using it, but look now how high resolution all those numbers are. Everything, the names. It looks so good with improved resolution. And even animations of those green weapons. This is all quad resolution for everything in your Pip Boy. Regardless of Pip Boy mode, I think it works in any Pip Boy mode. Of course, you know I'm using the green overlay one. That's my favorite. And yeah, look how much better that looks. That's a huge bump into quality, in my opinion having this high-resolution Pip-Boy rather than original low-resolution one. I don't know if that has any impact on game performance. Probably none. And that's all the changes that I did separately from what you can do from game settings. Just, just those little touches. And now more changes in NVIDIA control panel. I hope you can figure out how to access NVIDIA control panel. It's a little bit different depending on your PC. But you just need to open NVIDIA control panel. Then you go under 3D settings, manage 3D settings. I wish I could make it bigger. Okay, wait, can I like 
artificially stretch it so you can see better. I hope that will be better and not worse. But let's go over the settings. After you go under Manage 3D Settings, go for Program Settings. You need Fallout 76. I have shown only programs found on this computer. If it's not appearing in here for you, press the Add button and then it should open the list of recently opened programs. So if you recently just closed Fallout 76, it should be there. Alternatively, if you for whatever reason cannot, you can untick that box and manually find on the very long NVIDIA list followed76.exe. Now, after you find it, the settings I did change to improve the clarity, sharpness and overall quality of the picture as if you're concerned with uh, frame rates. Assuming you have one of the newest NVIDIA graphic cards, the graphic card is not a problem in Fallout 76. It's usually limited by your CPU, so even boosting those settings just improves the quality of the picture without reducing FPS in any noticeable manner. So the filtering 16 times, uh, that's global setting off, global setting on, that we are not changing that. Then anti-aliasing, we are overriding an application setting, putting it all to the maximum, eight times sampling. So that will, what anti-aliasing does, basically edges of objects look more smooth. The power lines in the world look like power lines and not like attached to each other little squares. So that that's what it does. That makes things smoother, looking more natural. It is taxing on graphic card, but not to the point that it wouldn't be able to do it, at least from my experience. Uh, next, this is unchanged, it should be unchanged. I'm not liking low latency mode, so it's off. Frame rates must be limited. Frame rates must be limited. I completely forgot here to mention, of course, I assume everyone did that already. Hopefully you did, but just in case you didn't, uh, I present interval, so I present, that's the setting in followed prefs in it that should be changed always to zero. After that, set max frame rates. I have 120. You can go higher from my testing. 180 is absolute maximum. After that, the game starts breaking. You'll be randomly frozen, glued to the floor, unable to interact with objects and uh, other weird things gonna start happening if you go above 180 FPS. So if your machine is capable to go higher, you need to limit it and ensure that it will never go higher than 180. Uh, monitor technology, fixed refresh, then multi-sampling, MFAA, I have on on, I have everything for quality, so nothing for improve FPS, it's all quality settings. Refresh rate, highest available, uh, texture filtering off, this anisotropic sample optimization, that's filtering off, negative, LOD bias, clamp, texture quality, highest quality possible, texture Trilinear optimization off. After that, threaded auto, triple buffering off, vertical sync off. If you see the tearing for whatever reason, I don't see it maybe because my monitor is really fast, so I don't see any tearing. If you do see tearing, I recommend running fast vertical sync as it doesn't affect your input lag, so it still feels very snappy and good at fast. I prefer off, uh, just mention of other vertical sync options. Although just switching vertical sync off in here without modifying any files does nothing. The built-in vertical sync, that is this I present interval, is overriding any other setting, so it needs to be changed through the ini file to zero. So about the custom ini, I will just copy everything as I have in here with the minus sign in front and paste it at the bottom of this video description. So you can basically copy everything from the moment you will see this general in brackets and down below, paste it into your custom ini file and then 
remove minus from whatever setting you want activated for yourself. I do hope this video will be helpful for you. Let me know your results. And that being said, thank you all for watching and see you all in the next one.